No, I don't see how it could be my fault. No, the other driver was going so slowly. Look, I need to call you right back. Hey gang, Dr. Mustache here. Are you a sloppy dresser? Kind of reckless? Do you get in more car accidents than the average person? Well, guess what? It's not your fault. Your cat may be to blame. New research links changes in human behavior with a cat parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. This parasite claims the cat as its primary host, but it can live in most warm-blooded animals. Toxoplasmosis is the disease that T. gondii creates. And since the 1920s, we've known that it can be potentially fatal to fetuses of pregnant women who come in contact with it. But new research points to the idea that toxoplasmosis can harmfully affect more people than just pregnant women. Cats excrete T. gondiocysts, a gross sounding word that basically just means their offspring, in their feces for two to three weeks after they become infected. Then other animals become infected by ingesting or inhaling the oocysts from the cat feces. Now, this can happen to people by eating raw meat, not being careful when you clean the litter box, or drinking contaminated water. Once the parasite has left the cat and infected another warm-bodied creature, it starts to make cysts inside the cells of the intermediate host's brain and tissues. Now, when that intermediate host dies, it'll be eaten by a cat, and thereby the T. gandhi is returned to its original host. So it's hypothesized that the T. gandhi parasite is actively influencing its return to the cat. How? Well, an infection of toxoplasmosis changes some of the chemical messages in the brain, and this can have a large effect on the host's behavior. In one study, mice and rats that were affected by the parasite made themselves more attractive to predators by being more active and visible, being less wary of the predators, and even going toward the scent of cats, something that's referred to as feline fatal attraction. These theorized behavioral manipulations result in the rodent dying and, if the T. gandhi is lucky, being eaten by the cat. It has been shown that one third of the world's population have been infected with toxoplasmosis. And until recently, it was believed that unless you had flu-like symptoms, were pregnant, or had a suppressed immune system, that you had a latent form of toxoplasmosis that was harmless. However, research in the early 2000s began to challenge this assumption. One prominent researcher, Yaroslav Flager, believes that the latent form of the parasite affects the way that our neurons communicate and changes our response to situations, our trust in other people, the way we dress and drive, our happiness, and even our mental stability. Flager believes that this latent form of the parasite gives people a mild form of fatal feline attraction and causes us to be less concerned for our own welfare. In Denmark, scientists were able to screen 45,000 women for the disease and the results were clear. Women with a toxoplasma infection were 54% more likely to attempt to commit suicide and twice as likely to succeed. And women who had the highest degree of infection were 91% more likely to attempt suicide than uninfected women were. Though most of the research and studies point to a correlation between the disease and behavioral changes, there's still no proof that the disease causes any of them. However, History provides an interesting link. The earliest modern examples of keeping cats as pets occurred in the mid-18th century, first in Paris and then in London, and primarily among artists and writers. Some people believe that schizophrenia was a rare disease prior to the mid-18th century, which is the same time that cats were being re-domesticated. Ready to stay away from cats forever? Well, most people think that you should be all right with an indoor cat that doesn't have much exposure to prey, and if you're careful when you're changing the litter box. But even so, it's theorized that this is only one of many parasites that have the potential to alter our behavior. So if it's not T. gandhi, it's probably something else. Or you're just crazy. Anyways, I gotta go. My parasites are hungry. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching Pet Lab and responding to our videos. We had a very popular question from our episode about smelling fear. Second Sight Studio asks, even though dogs and other animals have such better senses of smell, why do they never seem to be aggravated by horrible smells that make humans want to vomit or run away? Well, your dog may be getting more information than you are from that smell. Take, for example, other dogs' butts. Every canine has two anal glands in their rectum that emit smells that tell other dogs their health status and temperament. It's basically their form of ID. Well, that's it for Pet Lab. 
thanks again. And uh, remember, if you enjoy Pet Lab videos and you want to see other videos of and about and starring pets, be sure to click the subscribe button right here and subscribe to the Pet Collective.